Hey guys, so today I'm going to make this fit this. So this is a video about fixing my screw up. I sold this chuck to a fellow on eBay, a uh, Craftsman Atlas chuck. It's four inches in diameter and in the ad I said that this adapter plate that was on the back of it was 110 thread. It is one, but it's actually 1/8 thread and it's it's my fault. I measured it and said it was one and looked online and most of these chucks have 110 thread on them so I stupidly assumed that it was 110 thread but actually it's 1/8. So I gave him his money back, no big deal, but I told him, hey, if you want, what I'll do is buy a, an adapter plate for a 110 and we'll adapt it on there and I'll sell it back to you for the same price. So it's no big deal except the fact that it really should be done when, you, when you're doing an adapter, screw on adapter plate like this, you really should do it on the machine that it's going to go on to because you can do all the machining with it screwed on to the spindle. In this case, he just wasn't comfortable doing that. And because it's a four jaw chuck, it doesn't have to be as perfect as a three jaw chuck. We're, we're still going to get it perfect, but you have a little bit more margin of error with a four jaw because they're independent jaws and you're, you're going to center up your part with, it, with an indicator anyway. You're not just throwing it in there and expecting the jaws to center the part. You have to center the part. So the first thing you may notice is my plate is way too big. And that was just because of logistics. It could get here the quickest and it was actually a little bit cheaper than a, a four inch version. It's just a little bit extra machining. It's not a big deal. Actually this center reference is four inch and it's just a little bit bigger than the original, but we do have a reference here. The next challenge is how we're going to make sure that we are centered. You can't just throw this in the chuck and center on the outside and then to cut it down. So we are back on the mill lathe combo. I'm not far enough on the atlas to do this job. So I need to go ahead and get it done and get this returned to him because uh, he's wanting to use it. Like I said, this is part of Eddie's customer service that, uh, you know, I fix my own mistakes. So if you're not familiar how these screw on chucks work, and I'll use this 10 inch atlas as an example. Uh, we have our threads, we have a flat reference area, which is right here, and then we have the flat shoulder on the spindle. Important bit here is this reference below the threads. That makes sure that the screw on adapter is concentric in line with the spindle. What I need to do over here is assume that this center is cut properly, and we're going to make all our reference off of this flat section in the adapter nose. All right, so I played around with this for a little while and finally got it, I think, where we need it. There's a little bit of fluctuation, but that's just kind of the surface finish. But really, we're hovering around that one mark. So let's now take a look at the face. I think you'll be able to see the needle move there if it moves, which it will. Again, it's going to flutter a little bit because of the surface finish. Actually, I think I can get just a little bit more. Okay, yeah, we're within two thousandths there. It's it's seated. The chuck is seated. I, I don't think I'm going to just be able to get it much closer than that. With hopefully uh, the atlas will be able to do better, but. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this face. We're going to try to cut it down to roughly what this one is, which is about uh, 1375, about 1 5, or 3 8. That's not critical. That'll give us something to grip onto so that we can then flip it over face and reduce the dimension, the overall dimension of this thing on the other side.
Okay, we got the outer di diameter now down to 138. Now I gotta go in, uh, probably double this distance, double that shoulder distance. And we'll just make it successive face cuts. Got this profile tool, nice big radius on it. Alright, took a while to get there, but uh, I think we're close. Wish I could do this like Max does. He'd probably profile this with just two hands. <laughs> Alright, final result on this side. I think that looks pretty good. So I got the plate reversed and in the three jaw, and I'm holding on the boss that I machined to be concentric with the inner reference. However, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to have to go a different way here. Let me show you why. So as you can see, I have the indicator sweeping the back of the plate, which should be perpendicular to the boss that I machined. And it is within a thousandths, perfectly acceptable. However, then if I come in and get in there and sweep the reference. I'm getting anywhere from three, maybe three and a half thousandths of run out, maybe almost four. It's kind of hard to tell because we know that that surface is a little bumpy. Let's say three to four thousandths out from the face and presumably from the boss here. Uh, is that good enough for a four jaw chuck? It's not good enough for a three jaw chuck if I would put it on there. In my opinion, I'd want, I always, you know, like I say, I always go for two thousandths or less. And I have to use that register as my primary data point. Because i that's the only thing that I know is going to be the same between the two machines. I think I'm going to try something else. Okay, so this is what I came up with. I've kind of gone back and forth on this. You can tell I've never done this job before. I debated whether or not to put this back in the four jaw or not. And the problem I have there is that it, basically that, that four jaw is, is, is just clapped out. Uh, it doesn't like holding things on the nose and I would have to hold that nose. And it doesn't like holding things like that because one of the jaws is a little tippy and I could get it dialed in but I just don't have confidence that once I start cutting this outer edge that it is going to not move on me so and part of the reason that I sold that little chuck and part of the reason I'm doing this whole job is to reinvest that money into a new larger four jaw chuck what I've ended up doing here is I got a chunk of aluminum in here which I have essentially uh, mocked up the spindle on the little six inch lathe that this is going to go on to. And this register is just about a clearance fit to the register in the back of the chuck. And of course this shoulder is flat and perpendicular to it. So if I mount this on here as so, get it on there, and screw it in, which I have a threaded hole here just to lock it into. We're going to see how how that runs.
And of course I haven't moved my block, my aluminum block in there since I turned that register. So it should be turning centrally. The indicator on the nose. Now that I'm happy with. Fluttering around a, a thousandths is just fine with me. Okay, so now what we'll do is go ahead and take off the excess we have here and basically I can go right down to uh, this dimension because this register is just slightly bigger than I need. Okay, I've got it down to the original reference surface here. That is not the final reference surface, but the uh, part is pretty hot right now. It's uncomfortable to touch, so I'm going to let it cool down for a little while, come back and try to get that reference surface right. This is going to be a little tricky because I can't test it as I go because that nut is in the way. My original back plate is three inches. 815 thousandths. This is three inches, 827 thousandths. So I have a little bit more than 10 thousandths to take off. Zero RDRO. Seven and a half thousandths to go. Okay, I have switched over to a braised carbide bit because it's got a little bit better, it's got a little bit more a rounded nose on it, and uh, I'm trying to get this surface finish to improve. Yeah, approximately four thousandths. So. So at this point, everything gets tight on this machine. If you have one of these machines, everything gets tight. Uh, just as the only axis we're moving is the Y, and it will be as tight as I can get it without still being able to move it. So we are going to advance in one and a half thousands, just because I'm a wimp. All right, here we go. And I think I'm glad I only took one and a half because I think I'm there. Yeah, I'm I'm dead on it. Now the problem here is that I still can't check it. I can sort of check it, but not really. Because if I take it out of the chuck now, or take that bolt off, I lose I still have to cut this outer edge and I will lose, potentially lose that uh, perpendicularness. I'm going to say it's there. My measurements say it's there. I'm going to say it's there. So if it's not, well, I guess I'll just have to put it back in here and try to line it up as best I can. Um, obviously I'm only going to be able to make part of this cut, but that's okay because I can then take it out of the, take the bolt off of it, chuck it in here and just cut the center shorter. So I'm just going to take about a sixteenth of an inch off. Guys, I'll bring you back. This is throwing all kinds of dust all over the place, so protecting the camera. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, so I just have it set in the jaws normally with some aluminum backing on it. And we're just going to take this lip off and we're going to take it just a little bit below this surface here. And I'm having good luck on this surface with this profiling bit, so it's leaving a really nice smooth surface. So I'm just going to use it to do the rest of this. And, uh, Again, I'm not going to film this because it is really throwing dust at this camera, so I just can't uh, can't seem to keep put the camera in any position where it doesn't get pelted. So, 
So do they fit? Of course they fit. I think I'd show you this if it didn't. Absolutely no movement whatsoever. Not too bad, just by measurements with a dodgy lathe. You'll see that I put a little bit of recess right here just to just so the chuck, the actual body of the chuck sits on this surface, not the center surface, which was where our washer was. And that is damn near perfect, if I do say so myself. So, only one thing left to do. Flip it over, put some, put a couple clamps on it, use a transfer punch, knock us a couple holes in there, go over to the drill press, drill it and tap our holes, and then drop our screws in. Uh, for the guy who's buying this, who I know is watching, if you're going to do one of these in the future, it's really much simpler because all you need to do is make sure that you get this dimension, this outside dimension proper, or whatever reference dimension there is on your, on your chuck. So just screw it on and do all the, do all the uh, machining while it's screwed onto your machine. You don't have to worry about uh, making sure that your register and your threads are in line because they're going to automatically be in line. You know, it's kind of difficult sometimes to get a good finish on cast iron like this. Uh, I think I did pretty well. It's not terrible. I do see some places, some some fur as I call it. Some raised fur, but nothing terrible. Uh, I spent a little bit of time trying to get the right, the right bit to do that though. The bit that I used on this side I couldn't use on the other side because it it just wasn't the right dimensions to use so I had to find something when I did this side but and when it's on your spindle you know as you're as you're taking this register down you can constantly be checking it I was not able to do that you can see how it fits I was not able to do that because because of the center uh, the, the bolt and washer would have hit this center boss so I had to do it by measurement and um, I have to say I'm pretty happy with those measurements. Hope you got something out of that and I uh, hope somebody else got something out of that too and uh, thanks for watching.